Hey everyone, back with another tutorial today. Um, today I'll be showing you how to implement basic key validation for your programs. Um, it's not 100% effective and it's definitely not the best way about going about things. But you know, it works and you know, I've had no complaints. So let's get started. I've gone ahead and made a program. Uh, this, this program basically generates the key, key file for you and this just checks it against the key file. Um, the key file that is generated from this program, you will include with your program. However, you will not include this function in your program. So as you can see here, <coughs> this is our encryption me uh, method slash string. Uh, basically, we use an MD5 um, method of encryption. And yeah, so after the text, all that sort of stuff. Okay, this bottom one, this is button one, this here. So when we generate a key, a key file from the tokens provided, what we are basically doing is we've got a file on the desktop. I've, I've gone ahead and make, made this, it's just an, a list of unencrypted keys. So just put whatever you want in there, however you want them, and yeah, we'll, this will encrypt them. So as you can see here, <coughs> It, it asks you for a file, you select the file, which is this file. It will then go ahead and split each line with a new line. Uh, it will split each line that has a new line, and it will encry encrypt each line line by line. Um, <clears throat> finally, it will ask you for a like a path to save the file, and it will save all the keys to that file. So we'll go ahead and run that. So we'll generate an encrypted key file. We will choose our unencrypted text. It'll ask us where to save it. We'll just call it keys dot bin, I guess. Now if you go on your desktop or where we saved it, you'll see a keys.bin file. It is just a standard text file but Inside it is our keys, our unencrypted keys, which are these, encrypted. So now what we want to do is, you want to implement another uh, another function. This function will be in your program. Um, I don't care how you show this. I don't care where you put it. Basically, all you need is a a file dialog to request a key. Um, the user inputs a key. The way I've got this program set up is. This is where I'll input the key inside this text box here, and then I'll click check against the encrypted file, and it'll it'll ask you for that encrypted file, which is our keys.bin file, this one here. <clears throat> it'll ask you for that file. Um, it'll read all the keys in an encrypted manner, and then it will encrypt the key that you provided, and then it will check if that encryption. Uh, that encryption string is inside this file. If it is, well, in this program, it changes the background color to lime green and the label changes to a valid key provided. If it's not, it'll say not valid key. So we will go ahead and run that. Um, this will be valid. We'll check that against our keys.bin file. Right, it's valid. However, you change that. Choose our keys up in file. Yep, not a valid key. No good. Um, you don't even you don't need to actually show an open file dialog. You can just you can in your program you can literally just include the you can replace this whole section here with just this line and a string to the path of the key file. So if you can see for uh, forward slash uh, program files slash whatever your program name is slash keys dot bin, then you will put that location right here. Other than that, that's a basic um, way of uh, validation key system. Like I said, it's not the most effective way, but I haven't had any problems with it. Um, another way of doing this is instead of storing it on a file, you can actually store it in a setting. So if you get a project and check the properties, you can add a, a string 
you can call it keys and you can add one two three four five blah 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 um might be better if you do that add all the keys here and instead of having instead of having your um instead of having your keys stored locally you can actually store it within the program so that's pretty handy anyways guys that's it for today hope you enjoy the tutorial